Honored guests, faculty, administration, parents, and students, welcome to the 2018 National Honor Society Induction Ceremony. We are gathered here to formally recognize those students who have been selected by the faculty of our school for successfully completing their candidacy and are being inducted as new members of our National Honor Society chapter. For current members and those former members who may be among our guests, we hope this will serve to remind you of the standards of excellence you too are charged with maintaining as members of the nation's oldest, largest, and most prestigious student recognition program. Program. Our chapter is proud to have been inducting new members for over 25 years, and today's ceremony indicates the continuing emphasis on excellence that we represent for our school and community. Throughout the year, members of our chapter serve as role models for other students. In addition to the strong academic records, which established our eligibility requirements for membership, our chapter members are leaders in many student organizations, and we serve our school and community through many activities, including the capstone projects. We are proud of this record of accomplishment and welcome these new members who bring new energy in support of our continuing work as NHS members. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this day um, and just for these students who really have worked so hard uh, to get to this point, Lord. I thank you for their academic rigor um, and just their perseverance through, um, through all the, the, the tough parts of school and just the, the mundane, Lord. Um, I pray that you will just bless them and just let this ceremony just be a testament to who they are um, and just uh, help them to have a wonderful uh, rest of their time. Let's hear and pray. Amen. I would like to introduce Mr. Dan Perryman. Mr. Perryman is our NHS advisor. Mr. Perryman has taught at CAK for six years. He began his teaching career in 1978 and will begin his 41st school year in the fall. Mr. Perryman has taught elementary, middle school, and high school. He has been the principal of three different Christian schools. Mr. Perryman has been married to his middle school sweetheart for 40 years. Well, uh, we do have a lot in common with CAK because June 17th, 1978, we got married, didn't we? Uh, had my wife stand up. She's made it through a lot. So she's here today. And uh, in fact, I don't have any, any freshmen here that have my class tomorrow. Okay, that's one of the bonus questions is, what's the significance of 1978? Well, obviously, I want them to say that was when CAK was founded. But there is also, and I've told them this, 1978 as far as uh, my wife and I are concerned. So uh, we're truly thankful that you're here today. How many grandparents do we have attending today? Very good. I have two grandsons, a second grader and a fourth grader. And uh, I can't wait till they're sitting over here. And I'm hoping they will be, okay? They're, they're down in the CAK Elementary, but uh, we're, we're certainly thankful uh, that, that you're here today. Um, let's see, I'm going to ask you some questions. We're, we're going to be in a classroom here for just a few moments. Uh, grandparents, I want you to give me an answer. What would you consider, or what do you consider, success? Only, only a grandparent can answer. Don't be shy. Staying in God's will, okay, staying in God's will. Okay, come on. Tell me what you really want for these kids that are your grandkids over here. How many of you want them to get married three times and divorce twice? How many of you want them to go to prison for committing armed robbery? How many of you want them to cheat on their taxes so they spend a little time in jail? No one wants that. And most of these kids don't wake up every morning thinking, boy, you know what? I hope I go to school today and I get expelled. I, I just can't wait. You know, it's, it's now, believe me, sometimes some of them try, but uh, uh, they don't wake up doing that. There was a commercial a few years back. Uh, I think, and some of you may recall, where they were asking kids, what do you want to be? Well, when I grow up, I want to be uh, addicted to meth, okay? I want to do this. I want to do that. All negative things. Nobody sets out for failure, correct? Just go like this so I can at least see that you're here. Okay, good. Uh, but nobody sets out for failure. Nobody wants to fail. Uh, how many of you have failed in your life, adults? You 
forget it. How many of you failed? Okay. We could probably stay here until next April and go over all the failures that we have had. I've had a lot. You've had a lot. How many of you would consider yourself, you don't need to raise your hand by the way, successful? Just say that in your mind. Now we had one brave lady here that commented exactly the way I wanted her to. But you know what? Some of us are sitting there right now and we look at these little children over here. And believe me, they're children, right? I've got shoes older than some of them. Um, they're, they're young. They don't have a clue. Right, guys? Go like this. You, you don't have a clue. You don't realize what it's like. They're going to fail. How many of you have ever learned from a failure? How many of you have learned from success more than failure? Okay. I used to coach basketball uh, years and years ago. And uh, we were in a tournament. I can't even remember. This was back in the 80s in New Jersey. I was coaching the girls' basketball team. And, and we were good. Okay, we, we had a very good team, but we blew it. It was like three seconds to go, we're up a point, and all my girls are down on that end on the free throw line, or in the free throw lane. Nobody was what? What do they need to be? They need to be back, right? Because if they get the rebound, they'll sling it long, and the kid will lay it in and win the game. Guess what happened? That's what happened, okay? And that killed me. And it killed those girls. Man, they were crying. It was horrible and so forth. Girls cry. It's horrible. But from that failure, I never, from that point in time on, never failed to have at least two people back. You know, forget about the rebound, okay? They'll get the rebound, but don't let them score. Um, failure is essential to our lives, but it seems like we're afraid of it. And guys and girls, don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to not take first prize. Don't be afraid not to get the top grade in class. Now, I know, I know most all of you. Most of you don't worry about that, okay? So you're not afraid of that. But don't be afraid to fail. Well, I didn't get the class that I wanted. It's okay. You know, pick your bootstraps up and, and, and go on and take the class that you were assigned. Well, I didn't get, uh, you know, I'm not starting. Oh, I mean, you know who Scotty Pippen was, or is. I guess he's still alive. He wasn't a bad basketball player, but you know what? He never really started in high school, nor did Michael Jordan. He got, Jordan got cut from his high school team. Now, he could have quit, correct? He could have quit. That's the worst thing that you can do. Any of you have been ever cut from a team or didn't make the starting lineup when you sh thought you should? Be honest. So you all made a starting lineup, you scored 48 points a game, and you were just a huge success, right? Probably not. But when we think of success in our world, the Bible tells us not to be conformed to this world. Anybody familiar with that verse at all? Okay. What does that mean? What's being conformed to this world? Being like everybody else. But conforming to the world, what's that mean? What's the world think is success? Does the world think success doing the will of God? What do they think success? Money. Right. Having everything that you can possibly get, doesn't matter how you get it. Right? I mean, that's the world's thinking. And it doesn't matter how you get it. You can step on people. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and I'm going to get to the top, and I don't care who I hurt. That's the world's thinking. I can be dishonest. Many of you are in business. You could probably tell stories of people of being dishonest in their dealings in business. But they've got to succeed. Now, if they're looking for the will of God, is that important to them? Money is not important to somebody that's seeking the will of God because we know God will take care of us. My wife and I, as we said, started in 1978. Um, <laughs> my salary was $5,200 for the year. Uh, Donna worked at a public library and I don't know how much you made. We both combined, we made less than $10,000. Now that's 1978, I understand that, but that wasn't a whole lot of money to try and get by. But we did. The Lord always provided for us.
Now, some people will look at us, and we do. We have people that we went to school with and maybe even some family that said, you are crazy for doing what you're doing. But I know Donna would testify, and I would too. I wouldn't trade this for all the money in the world for these guys sitting right here and for kids that are now... That team that I coached back, the, you know, the long throw and all in the 80s, I just had one of those players come by and visit me. Next month, she's going to be 50. So, you know, that went, oh, man, that kills me. But I wouldn't be determined to success. We didn't win every game we played. This afternoon, before we're getting ready to go over here, I turned on uh, uh, E60, you know, does stories about athletes. And this changed the whole thrust of what I was going to speak about. Uh, the 1998 draft. Does anybody know who was drafted second? No. Ryan Leaf. Who was drafted first? Peyton Manning. Do you know who was going to be drafted first? Ryan Leaf. But guess what? I don't want to go to Indianapolis. I'm from San Diego. I mean, it's beautiful weather. Why do I want to go to Indianapolis? So you know what? He was supposed to have to meet a meeting with the general manager of the Indianapolis Colts. Guess what? He asked his agent, what should I do? And the agent said, don't go to the meeting. <laughs> Just snub him. So he snubbed him. Well, guess who the first pick was? Peyton Manning. Second pick, Ryan Leaf. <sighs> he goes to San Diego. Guess what happens? First two games he plays as an NFL quarterback. Wins them both, 2-0. and Doing great. Third game was in Kansas City. Okay? Pour in the rain. And I just, this is fresh in my mind because I just saw it. Uh, <laughs> that was the end of his professional career that day. He was one for 15, two interceptions, and three fumbles. Now, instead of doing what? Learning from that, what did he do? He basically gave up. He quit. He was arrogant. One of the quotes that struck me, an interviewer asked him, what is the difference between Ryan Leaf and God? <laughs> he, he said, God doesn't think he is Ryan Leaf. So what does that mean, Ryan Leaf thought? Basically, he was God. Now, if any of you know, and I know some of you guys probably, maybe some of you ladies know uh, what transpired and so forth. <laughs> Messed up, drugs, just, just a mess. Spent time in prison, just a mess. But, now I didn't get to watch the whole thing. I watched it before. But today... He's, he's doing a great job. I believe, and somebody correct me if you know what I'm talking about, he's in a Christian ministry and uh, helping people that are addicted. Now, is he a success? When you say Ryan Leaf in the NFL terms, what do most of those guys think? Pfft, he's a failure. But you know what? Yes, he went through some hard times. But he learned after a period of time not to forget failure and learn from it. Um, guys, what I'm here to say to you today is there's going to be plenty of times in your life when things are going to get tough. You don't think, you think you have stress, right? <laughs> stress. Well, there's going to be a whole lot more. Everybody has stress, but it's how we handle it, who we put our trust in. One of my favorite verses, we used to go to a camp up in the Colorado Rockies. Uh, most beautiful place in the world. I mean, it was just unbelievable. And at dinner time, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we all stood and we recited 1 Corinthians 10.31. Now, forgive me, this is the King James Version, okay? So don't, you know, but, it, but it's what we learn. Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all for the glory of God. That's why we're here as believers, by the way. It's not so that we can, you know, thump our chests and say, you know, I, I've got straight A's in every class. I've got every scholarship imaginable. I'm going to the most prestigious university in, in, in the world. But then when I graduate and my life hits rock bottom like Ryan Leafs did, what does it all mean? Does it mean anything? So I submit you today that 
these young people are successful. Okay, they have attained a, um, a matter of success. But is that everything for these guys sitting here right, right now? No. That, that's, that's nice. It's wonderful. It's great. Uh, next Sunday, we'll celebrate our seniors. We'll uh, see all the accomplishments that they've made. But really, when we stand before the Lord and he asks us, tell me what you did. Well, I played on two consecutive state softball championships. Okay, big deal. Well, I was a member of a Super Bowl team. Big deal. 1 Corinthians 10 31, ladies and gentlemen. Whether they're for you to eat or drink, that means pretty much what? <coughs> Say everything. 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 Everything I do, I do for his glory. If I can keep that in mind, my life's going to be different. My successes are going to be different than what the world says. I'm not going to be conformed to this world. So I leave that with you. I'll tell you a little story, and I, I brought this up last year. Um, there was a man, his name was uh, Reed Hastings. Anybody remember? Was anyone here last year? There are Senator Donna. Okay, Reed Hastings. He had a $40 overdue bill from Blockbuster. Guess what he did? He went out and created a little company called Netflix, okay? Which did what to Blockbuster? <laughs> Put him out of business, basically. But yet, he had a $40 overdue charge. He was upset. He thought, oh, you know, but you know what? He bounced back. He bounced back. He didn't take that. How many of you have ever read Dr. Seuss? How many of you still read it sometimes at night when you're up in your room by yourself? Okay. Do you know that 27 publishers turned him down with his books? What do you think they feel like today? <laughs> wow, we messed up. But 27 rejections, though, is what I'm pointing out. So keep that in mind. Failure will happen, but what's, what's success in God's eyes is finding his will and doing it. Now, I know that's hard for you guys to imagine right now. You're just thinking about tomorrow, okay? Oh, man, I got a test or, you know, whatever. But think about that. Remember 1 Corinthians 10.31. Thank you. It is at this time that we proclaim to all in attendance that membership in the CAK chapter of the National Honor Society has been earned by these candidates through effective demonstration of the four qualities that serve as standards for the society. Members of the chapter will now review these qualities. We begin with character. In Romans 5.8, we are told that since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also gain this glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Character, therefore, is the force within the individual that distinguishes each person from another. It creates for each of us our individuality, our goodness. It is that without which no one can be themselves and can respect oneself, nor hope to attain the respect of others. It is this force of character that guides one through life and once developed, grows steadily within. Character is achieved and not received. It is the product of constant thought and action, the daily striving to make the right choice. The problem of character is the problem of self-control. We must also be in reality what we wish to appear to others, to be rather than to seem. By demonstrating such qualities as respect, responsibility, trustworthiness, fairness, caring, and citizenship, we may hope to prove by example that we value character. Thank you. Thank you. 
Leadership should exert a wholesome influence on the school. In taking initiative in the classroom and in school activities, the real leader strives to train and aid others to reach their common goals of success. The pride of leadership is sacrifice, the willingness to yield one's personal interests for the interests of others. A leader has self-confidence and will go forward when others hesitate. No matter what power and resources may exist in a school, community, or leader, leadership is always needed. Thus, to lead is a meaningful and substantive charge to each of our members. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews, Greeks, or the Church of God, even as I try to please everybody in every way. For I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. Follow my example, as I follow the example of Christ. 1 Corinthians 10.31-11.1 to In the book of Hebrews, the writer addresses the Jewish Christians who were being persecuted by both Jews and Gentiles. They needed a renewal of confidence and an exhortation to persevere. In Hebrews 6, 10 through 12, it is written, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown to him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show the same dil diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who, through faith and patience, inherit what has been promised. Scholarship denotes a commitment, a diligence, if you will, toward learning. A student willing to spend hours in reading and study knows the lasting benefits of a cultivated mind. We should continue to learn even when formal education has ended, for human education ends only with the end of life. Knowledge is one great element in life which leads to the highest success, and it can be acquired through diligence and effort. Learning furnishes the lamp by which we read the past, the torch guiding us to understand the present, and the light that illuminates the future. Candidates have the charge to continually expand their world through the opportunities inherent in scholarship. Service can be established in the routine of the day's work where many opportunities arise to help others both at school and in the community. A willingness to work for the benefit of those in need without monetary, monetary compensation or public recognition is the quality we seek in our membership and promote for the entire student body. We are committed to volunteering our time and talents to the creation of a better tomorrow. CAK places a strong emphasis on service, building up the body of Christ, as well as building up our community. With God as the center of its work, CAK always encourages its students to become involved in community, school, and church outreach. The students involved in this chapter of National Honor Society go above and beyond the required service that CAK demands. As is the heart of the believer, service is the focus of this organization. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. 2 Corinthians 9, 12 to 13. All right, I'd like to thank uh, these five young people right here, Ryan Cross, Sarah Keller, Sam Clower, Claire Brock, and Rose Milam. Um, if you would stand. Thank you, guys. Good job. The thing that they were most concerned with was lighting those candles. Okay, that was pressure, but you did a great job. Thank you guys for, for helping out today. Okay, in just a second here, I'm going to introduce Ryan Cross. He's going to call the names. Uh, I will give the certificates. If you could wait, you know, on your applause until everybody's through, they'll go back. They have to sign a book back there. They get a pen, and they also get a card, which what? Okay. It doesn't really do a whole lot, but it looks really nice. Uh, but uh, they will do that. Um, and then we will conclude our service. At this time, I'd like to introduce Ryan Cross. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Bruce, he's not here. 
Please come forward as your name is called. Joseph Howard. Caroline Joy. Christian Kate. Cooper Anderson. Chip Bevel. McKinley Blackburn. Madison Borelli. Haley Carroll. Hannah Carroll. Bailey Chitwood. Gregory Clark. Olivia Denton. Truman Douglas. Luke Etherton. Brooke Forrester. Aaron Frazier. Mallory Gibson. Holly Gray. Matthew Gurley. Reagan Helton. Edmund Hensley. <coughs> Caleb Hollifield. Madden Jenkins. Jelks. <laughs> Shelby Grace Justice. Emily Kelly. Sarah Little. Felicity Milam. Katie Loop. Noah McElroy. Margaret Milliken. McKenna Mazingo. Tristan Murray. Christina Nason. Joy Nason. David William Noakes. Sean Cameron Noakes. John Ogle. Callie Jo Farr. Sage Sharp. Brandon Spencer. Tori Beth Sullivan, Ashley Teaster, Michael Tonkin, Reed Tucker, congratulations. Okay, so we, we encounter this problem just about every year is that we get a backlog of, of them signing, but uh, we can make a few announcements and uh, we'll just, I don't know if you know any good jokes, we can do that as well. After this, and ladies and gentlemen, you, you heard about servant, right? Service, here's your first opportunity. When we're done here, see all these things we're sitting in, 
we need to stack those so that I can put this together because you got to eat lunch tomorrow sometime. So we'll, we'll get that all put together. Dad's also, if you could help out a little bit, uh, there's a chair rack there and one over there, I believe. Also, we do have refreshments. Um, help yourself. Uh, take pictures, whatever you uh, would like to do. Uh, we're so gl glad that you're here. I know sometimes this kind of gets glossed over. It doesn't take really long to do, uh, but this is a good accomplishment for these kids. And as we talked about the four things, remember scholarship was just a quarter of the four. Uh, leadership is huge, and uh, being a servant is huge, uh, and just having character. You know, if we educate this, but we don't educate this, Christian Academy in Knoxville doesn't even need to exist because they can go anywhere and get this educated if they want, okay? Uh, but it's uh, very few places that they can do this. So in just a few minutes when they all get done, they must have long names or something. Uh, we will bring them up here. I will give them the pledge. The pledge is going to be up on the screen there. Uh, the last couple of years we've done it without it on the screen and it was a mess, all right? So uh, at least the words will be up there for them to see. So we're down to two, four, six, seven of them. Um, Mr. Snyder, has, uh, he had knee, sur knee replacement surgery Tuesday. Uh, had surgery at 1.30, and about 4 o'clock he was emailing me and texting me. And, uh, of course, he was a little medicated, so some of the stuff he said didn't make a whole lot of sense. But uh, he is recovering. Uh, they had him up that very day walking, and uh, he is recovering. By the way, we, we live right next door to them. Uh, he mows my yard. And I went over yesterday to see when it was going to get mowed, <laughs> and he, he didn't really know when that was going to happen. But uh, continue to pray for him. He is recovering, um, and uh, he really wants to be here. And hopefully by the 8th of... Uh, well, maybe next Sunday night for the senior uh, dinner, he's, he's going to try. Uh, but his wife, just like mine, is a doctor in, in the house, so we, we have to listen to our doctor, don't we, gentlemen? Yeah, okay. And generally, they know best. All right. All right, now this is actually what makes this official. There were a couple that were not able to be here today. So in order for them to be actual official members of the National Honor Society, they have to take this pledge. So they'll come into my office, they'll stand there, <laughs> and I will swear them in, and they will be official. So if you all would please stand. And it's just kind of like we're in court, okay? Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I would suggest maybe look there. I pledge to maintain high scholastic standing. You're supposed to say that. <laughs> okay, are we over there? Okay, you repeat after me. And we've inducted these people. Hmm. All right. Let's try it again. I pledge to maintain high scholastic standing. I pledge to maintain high scholastic standing. To endeavor intelligently and courageously to be a leader. To endeavor intelligently and courageously to be a leader. To give of myself freely in service to others and to hold as fundamental and worthy. of a place in the Christian Academy of Knoxville chapter of the National Honor Society. All right, very good. <laughs> it's a good thing we have the words up there. All right, guys, stay standing. Stay standing. Stay standing. All right, parents, grandparents, these are your kids. Give them a round of applause.
Okay, now what we're going to do, I'm going to close in prayer, and then we're, when we're done praying, if you would not mind, help us with the chairs real quick. We'll have our little buffet. You may stay as long as you want. I'm leaving at 3.30, so um, no, I'm only, only partially serious there. But uh, take your time, take as many pictures as you would like, and enjoy this time. Let's all stand, please. <clears throat> Let's pray. Father, we're truly thankful for, first of all, you and your son that you sent to die on the cross for our sins. We're thankful for this school that for 40 years have been training young men and women to go out in this world and teaching them how to live. Lord, we know that these young people to my right are full of energy, full of ideals, full of uh, dreams. Lord, I pray that you would set your dream, their dreams upon you, that they would subject every decision they make to you. It will only be a few short years until they're planning for college, and then after that, a vocation and marriage. And Lord, I pray they would submit every question to you. Lord, we're thankful for all the grandparents represented, for the parents that are here. Obviously, these young people uh, would not have been able to achieve what they have without their parents uh, um, prodding. And Lord, I pray that you would give us a, a great time of fellowship. You would bless us the rest of this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.